All right, so this is going to be the most requested part of the Fight Stick Alpha video. Questions about wiring. Um, as I went over in the other video that I did about some of the tools that I use, this is just basic wire that I pulled out of an ethernet cable. Um, when you open up an ethernet cable, it's going to have eight wires inside of it, a uh, combination of one color, one white, uh, four times over. I picked up a hundred foot cable that was being thrown out of my office. I've got wire for days now. It's fantastic. Um, I would really advise against buying wire online as you're going to really overpay for something that you can otherwise get out of the garbage. Now you can see that these are coiled together, so the first thing that we're going to do is decoil them. Um, I'd advise against pulling because that's going to happen. It's going to all bunch together and uh, you, you may break. Uh, you can see here it makes parts of it really tight. Uh, just, just not very good. So let's just grab the other piece here. And the first thing that we're going to do is straighten it a little bit. So to straighten it, I just kind of pull tight on one side and move it up here. And you can see that we're left with a pretty straight piece of wire. Um, <clears throat> Next thing that we're going to do is just cut the end off here. And again, these are the wire crimpers that I showed off in my tool video. Uh, probably my single favorite piece of uh, tool that I use when I'm working on these sticks and really any other electronic project. And let's say for this video, we're going to work on a common ground wire uh, that's going to be needed on a Fight Sick Alpha. And it's the one that I got the most comments and most direct messages about uh, people needing a little bit of help with. Uh, now we're not going to make a full common ground wire, but let's at least make a few links in it. So we're just going to take a little bit here and just cut it off. And let's say we wanted to make one that would work with three or four buttons. Just going to cut a few lengths of wire here. Okay. Now again, you don't have to have a wire crimper or cutter. Uh, you could do this with a very cheap one from the dollar store. Uh, it's going to work exactly the same. Voila. Where it does come in handy though is for stripping wires. Now, you can see there's a plastic coating around this wire. We need to remove that. With the crimping tool, all you have to do is place it in and voila, you have it cut. But this wouldn't be a complete video unless I showed you the other way to do it. Exacto knife. Uh, definitely a little bit harder. What we're going to do here is very gently just cut into the plastic without actually cutting the wire inside. It takes a little bit of practice. You'll get used to it by feel. You cuts around it at roughly the same place and we should actually just be able to tighten it and pull it right off there so if we compare these two you can see that the right one here that I did with the crimper is a lot cleaner there's definitely nothing wrong with the one that I did by hand uh, it's not as clean it's still gonna work exactly the same it's a lot slower but if you're really only looking to do this as a one-off project and you don't want to invest in a wire crimper, these are a dollar at the dollar store, it'll serve exactly the same purpose. Uh, for the sake of time though, I'm just gonna quickly do these. Remember to clean it out every now and then. Okay, that was a bad cut. I went a little long. So you know what we're going to do? We're just going to cut that off. Do it again. Always have spare wire. Accidents will happen. Okay. <clears throat> These are normal insulated 0.187 quick disconnects. Uh, this is the 
female variant, uh, the one that you're going to use for fight stick projects and push buttons. There's also a male variant. Uh, the male variant would simply slide into this one. Uh, these are really intended for industrial purposes, but they seem to work well with fight sticks. So uh, I picked these up off eBay. Uh, I think it was like a hundred pack for about ten dollars Canadian. They're pretty cheap. Uh, the next lot that I get, I'm going to get more expensive ones that actually have a proper uh, separate coating piece that goes on top of them. Um, <clears throat> so if we're doing a common ground setup, I'm going to try my best to illustrate this here. I apologize, my voice is a little raspy. I'm fighting a little bit of a cold. Um, we're going to connect a few wires in series. Something like this. And this is the end that's going to go to the fight stick, to the common ground. And then it's going to be attached to the grounds on the different buttons. So for this, we could have four buttons. Uh, the fight stick alpha obviously has six buttons on it, so you'd want to add two more links to this. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the end one, and we're just going to twist this wire a little bit. We're going to put the wire into the quick disconnect. You can see that it comes out the other side here. You just want to pull it back a little bit until it's just peeking out. And again, with the crimper. And again, you really will need a crimper. Uh, you know what? That might be a lie. You might not. I'm just going to quickly do this one with the crimper. It's using the crimp section. Give it a good crimp. And you can see that that wire is now stuck in there. Um, these are needle nose pliers from the dollar store. Let's challenge ourselves and see if we can do the same thing. Now, the next link's the important one. We can't simply put quick disconnect on the other side here because this would just be linking between two. So we're gonna take the next wire series, like this, and we're just going to twist these two together. And there you have it. Now, what I like to do is actually fold this part over a little bit onto itself just to reduce the amount that's sticking out. And then we're going to take that whole piece and put that into the quick disconnect. And again, we're going to push that up about halfway. And we're just going to try something here. I'm going to take my needle nose pliers and see if I can do the same thing. Pretty good squeeze there. Oh yeah, yeah, that definitely worked. Okay, so don't need this, but definitely helpful to have. You can see here that it is very well connected and we've now got two on the series. So let's continue along here. Actually, this is the one that had the really bad cut on it. So I'm just gonna kind of wrap that around. And again, fold it over on itself. You don't have to do that part. It's just something that I like to do with mine. I'm going to get another quick disconnect here. Feed it in a little bit, just so that it's starting to show. We're going to take our needle nose pliers and just squeeze down as tight as you can. Voila. Actually, that works pretty well. Might even work better than my crimper. You learn something new every day. I will guarantee you one thing, the crimper is definitely faster for stripping wire. This one's pretty short to begin with, so we're just going to put that right in. And we crimp down. Voila. So there we have a common ground wire. Now, let's say, we're gonna take this blue wire that we sacrificed earlier. We'll just cut off a little bit of it here. Let's 
say that this was the wire coming off of the PCB board. And, well, now we're left with how do you attach these two? Uh, we don't want to connect a quick disconnect to it because there's nothing for that quick disconnect to connect to. So there's a few different ways that you can do it. We can solder them together. We can hot glue them together. Or we can just use electrical tape. I'm a big fan of the electrical tape or heat shrink tubing. Um, <clears throat> for this one, I'm just going to show you guys with heat shrink tubing. Uh, we don't need this much of it, so I'm just going to cut this guy in half. We're going to slide the heat shrink tubing onto the wire. We're going to take the wire, twist it together, just like we did last time. We're going to bend it back so that's flat. We're going to slide the heat shrink tubing over the exposed wire. We are going to find our trusty lighter. And we are just going to apply a very quick amount of heat to the heat shrink tubing. Not enough that it burns or melts, just enough so that it shrinks up. And voila, there we have it. It's going to be pretty hot to the touch, so be careful. But that's going to give you a very good connection. So if this was our Fight Stick Alpha, we would now have this coming off of the PCB board. A very good connection to the new set of common ground wires. And then you would connect these to the Sanwa buttons. The great thing about Sanwa buttons is it doesn't matter which of the two prongs you connect the ground to, because the other one is going to be the positive terminal. Um, if we were doing the other wires, so the wires that go from the PCB to the actual buttons, you would effectively just be doing this part and one link. So you wouldn't have to do any other wires. You'd make six of these, do them onto the different wires. So that is the first technique. <clears throat> Let's say you don't have any heat shrink tubing, but we still need to connect a wire. Let's go ahead and just strip two of these. say we need to connect these two wires. No heat shrink tubing. We're going to go ahead and put them together here. Just like we did last time, we're going to bend that back, try and make it flat a little bit. And we're just going to take some electrical tape. We're going to cut off a small little section of it. really bad cut. Give me a second here. Here's our little square of electrical tape. I find the easiest way to do this is just to put a little bit of an overhang on. We're going to fold the overhang over the front. We're going to squeeze it down with our fingernail and then wrap the other way. This is gonna give you roughly the same as the heat shrink tubing. It's just a heck of a lot cheaper, just this is from the dollar store. And you're gonna gum up a little bit. The edges aren't gonna be perfect on it, but it'll serve for moderate to excessive use. Um, it's not coming apart anytime soon. You can even blast it quickly with the lighter. As soon as you heat it up a little bit, it's going to shrink down a little tiny bit. It's going to kind of start to melt a little bit. You know. And yeah, don't do like I did. That was a little too much to hit it with. 
yep, it's all going to bond together and it's not coming apart anytime soon. Now the last way is to solder the wires together. Um, for this one, let's go ahead and just take another quick little bit here. I wouldn't really recommend this technique for anyone that's just doing a quick mod to a fight stick or, you know, just basic connection of wires. Um, if I was working on something for a client or if I was, you know, working on one of my own projects where I'm going to spend 10 hours doing the wiring anyway, then, you know, yeah, I might, might do the soldering there. Uh, what we're going to do for this is we're just going to connect these wires like so. I'm going to grab our helping hands. I'm going to put the wire into the helping hands. <clears throat> we're going to put our safety goggles on. And all we're going to do is put our soldering tip on the wire, heat the wire up, and then just move the solder onto it. And you can see that the solder instantly goes onto the wire. This is called tinning the wire. Now, a lot of people think that you have to move the solder onto the soldering iron. Uh, that is incorrect. It's just going to ball up and it's not going to be as easy. You want to heat up the wire or the metal that you're working on, put the solder to it, and the solder will naturally flow onto it. Um, definitely not my best work ever, but you can see that that is a tinned edge. Now, you can, of course, follow this up by putting heat shrink tubing on or just electrical tape around it and that wire is not coming apart unless the wire itself breaks. Now, the last thing is the hot glue gun. Um, you have your, your PCB where all the wires are coming out of, and there's gonna be really one of two ways that those connect to the PCB. They're either going to be part of a, a plug or some sort of connector and I'm actually just looking around for one of those right now give me a second and I will find one okay this is a wire from a uh, standard JLF connector um, you got your normal five pins here which is up down left right and ground um, <clears throat> this is your typical click in style button if you got one of these you don't really need to worry about this step but if your PCB consists of wires that are just soldered into a board, what I would probably recommend you do is take some hot glue and just apply it to the end of the wire where it goes into the PCB. Uh, the hot glue is not going to do anything to the electrical components. Uh, it is going to make it a lot stronger. If these ever get tugged, they're not going to go anywhere. Um, let me just see if I can quickly find a cable that I've done some hot glue work on. I apologize, I cannot find anything immediately that I've done some hot glue on. Uh, for note's sake, the fight stick alpha that I did, I did not have to do any hot gluing on that one. I did all of that with um, these guys and uh, heat shrink tubing. So that's everything. I hope that gave you guys a little bit of an insight into how I do some of my wiring jobs. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them below. I'll try to answer as many as I can. Thanks a lot.